So in section 2.1, we're going to look at some stem plots, uh, line graphs, and bar graphs here. Now, the whole goal of data, of, of uh, organizing visual displays of data, is to uh, be able to interpret and see the results a lot easier. So we want to have graphs that are nice and clean, uh, just visually pleasing. So here we have a lot of raw data, so just numbers that we have. These are exam scores. And it's a little difficult to kind of see a pattern or to see what's happening. So let's go ahead and try to organize this. And we're going to construct a stem and leaf graph here. And we always want to put our data in ascending order. So we got off fairly easy here because our data already starts from smallest to largest. And that makes it a lot easier for us. For a stem and leaf graph here, uh, the leaf consists of the final significance digit here. So since we have numbers that are uh, just in the tens place, so two digits, that means the we have our tens place and our ones. So the ones is going to be the leaf. And then the tens place will be our stems in this case. So if we look at that very first number there, which is 33, then the stem is going to have a three and the leaf is also going to have a three. That results with the number 33. Let's go to the next set of numbers. So here we have 42, 49, and 49. So we're gonna put the stem once with a four, and then we'll go ahead and put the leaf uh, corresponding to each one of those digits. So we have a four and a two for 42, a four and a nine for 49. And since we have 49 twice, we wanna go ahead and list that two times as well. And we're just gonna go through all of our data and, and fill this stem and leaf plot in. So our 50s, our 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, and we have 90s, and then we have a 100s place. And notice that the stem has a 1, 0 for that, uh, that 10 there. So that's going to the 100s place there. So we just went through all the data, and we started filling in the values. And it's important that we make sure that we uh, line them up. Uh, that way we get a sense of how large one row is compared to the other. Now, with stem and leaf plot, if we turn it on its side, it's actually a, a bar graph. And specifically, it's going to be a histogram that has a width of 10. So uh, if we were to turn it on its side, this guy's going to really create a bar graph that we're used to seeing with those vertical bars. Uh, and specifically, it's going to really be a histogram. Even though these um, uh, bars are touching, it's really a histogram with those groups of 10 there. And this is why we cover these stem and leaf graphs, because uh, it's a nice transition into those histograms, which we're going to get into uh, in the next section. Okay, so let's look at this example here. And so we're looking at a survey of 40 mothers, and we're asking, uh, they were asked, I guess, for their teenagers uh, to remind them to do chores. And so, again, this first category, um, a number of teenagers that didn't have to get reminded at all, right, there was two of them in that group, and so on for each of these. So here we have data that's already organized in a nice table. And so we're going to want to put, let's put our frequency and number of times teenager is reminded. And so here we have the y axis, uh, which is typically our dependent variable. The x axis are independent variable. And when we label that y axis, notice 14 is the largest value. So there's no need to go beyond that. And we could pick our numbers as we want. So uh, in order to have some nice values, I'm going to go ahead and just end it at 15, even though that's not the max, just so these numbers are nice and clean. I chose to go up by threes. You could have went up by fives or any value you want. And so uh, similarly here, we're going to go ahead and do that on the x-axis. The highest value there is five, so no need to go beyond that in this case. And then we're going to want to go ahead and plot these. So kind of like in an algebra class, if you, recorded how to, if you remember how to um, record um, ordered pairs. And we'll go ahead and do another axis here. So we could go ahead and do a different type of graph. But let's start off with a line graph, and then we'll get into the bar graph here. So let's go ahead and plot these values. 
So the first, you can think of it as an ordered pair, it's going to be 0, 2. So we're going to go ahead and put a plot right there on our line graph. And we'll do these for the next value as well. So again, I'm going over 1, and then I'm going to go up 5 units there. So from that origin. And make a plot. And we'll go ahead and do this for each of those values there. And since we want a line graph, we're going to go ahead and connect these. Notice it's different than an algebra class where you get a linear equation that's completely a straight line. This one is going to be a little bit jagged here. So this is going to be our line graph in this case. And technically, this is what we call a frequency polygon. Okay. And so right here for this, um, uh, let me back up right about here. So right here, notice that this one starts at 0 and then moves over. A lot of times for a bar graph, uh, we don't want to start it right at 0 so it overlaps with the axis. So many times we will have graphs where we move things over. So we're going to shift this over a little bit here. And then we're going to label that as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So notice that 0 is right not at the origin but slightly off there. Um, and let's go ahead and plot this. So again, the first point, 0, 2, is about there. But instead of leaving it as a dot, we're going to go ahead and make a bar to that height there. And so the reason we moved it over was so that that bar is not on that uh, y-axis. And we're going to go ahead and do this for all of these uh, values here. So the next one goes to a height of 5. Then the next one is going to go to 8 and so on here. And it's always a good idea to label these just so it's nice and clean. So if we pick up one of these, for example, if we see here that uh, for 3, we do go up to a value of uh, 14. That's corresponding to this right here. Okay, let's look at some other types of graphs here. And um, let me, well, I'll just let this go here. Okay, so here we have some data. And uh, we're looking at different age groups and number of Facebook users here. And so they're giving us a proportion, which is what we've talked about as a relative frequency. And then the actual number of users is what we're considering the frequency. And here I abbreviated as FREQ. And then we have our limits in this case. Uh, so those are the age groups. It's always a good idea to add up our grand totals whenever we have one of these tables here. It does say on top that it's about 146 million users, but we want to be exact in that case. And they already worked out the proportions, but a good question is how do we actually get this number? Well, it's going to be how many we have in that category over the grand total. So 0.445 to two decimals is about 0.45% there. Okay. So let's look at a bar graph. And again, we're gonna look at age group versus frequency. And then we'll also look at a pie chart uh, with age group versus percent. And again, a pie chart, typically wanna put the percent there. So let's go ahead and uh, start off with our bar graph here. And so those are our limits. These are age groups. And then we have the Facebook users, and that's going to be in uh, millions here. And if we look at the very first group, so that's a little bit over 65 million there. So we're going to go ahead and make that group up to that height there. And we'll go ahead and do that for each of these uh, different categories here. Okay, and so here's a nice bar graph representing that. Uh, let's look at a pie chart here with the same data, but we're going to use the percentages this time. And if you recall, a pie chart is really a Pareto chart here. Um, and we like to start off kind of at that 12 o'clock position and work counterclockwise. So the largest piece is... A little less than 50%, so a little less than half. And I'm just estimating here. I'm not pulling out a protractor, but I'm going to go ahead and just go a little bit uh, less than 50% there. 
And there's a good label for that. Now, the next group from 26 to 44, it is about 33, or it's about a third of it. It's 36%, so about a third of it. So I'm going to use about a third of the circle there. And again, just estimating that. And then finally, the other group is about uh, roughly a little less than a quarter. And that's just kind of what's left over there. And that will account for 19%. So here's a nice way where we have some data that's already organized, and then we could recreate some of these other types of graphs.